This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, how there, ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Dyer welcoming you to another sports catastrophe birthday boy. And this birthday boy is one of the best pure shooters of all time. Well, in a free throw sense, it is one of the best free throw shooters of all time. And that is Rick Barry. Rick Barry today turns. 77, 78 years old. He's still active. Well, he's still alive. He's one of the greatest players in NBA history. He played in the ABA and NBA. He's one of the most prolific scorers in basketball history. He's the only player ever to lead the NCAA, ABA, and NBA in points per game in, one, in a season. He's the all-time ABA scoring leader in regular season history at 30.5. A game. Well, when he scored 36.3 a game against the Washington Bullets in 1975, it was the most in NBA Finals history. Surprised that Will Chamberlain never did that, or even Michael Jordan. Barry is the only player to reach the 50 point mark in game, in a game seven in, in a playoffs in either league, and he's he's only he's one of only four players in history to. Be an ABA and NBA champion. Basically, he was known for his underhand free throw technique. His 88% free throw shooting is number one in NBA history, and his 90% in 1980 was the best in NBA history until he retired. And then 1987, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. He has five sons who played college who've played professional basketball, either in the NBA or elsewhere. The most famous is Brent Berry, who was a very good player, uh, three-point shooter for teams like Seattle and Sacramento. John Berry also played for the Kings. Anyway, so Rick Berry grew up in New Jersey and shockingly decided to go to the University of Miami, which is not really a basketball school, if you ask me, because the Hurricanes had an up-tempo pro-style system. And this is where Rick Barry met his wife Pamela, who was the daughter of the head coach. As a senior in 1965, Barry led the NCAA with 37.4 points a game. Unfortunately, the Miami Hurricanes couldn't take part in the NCAA tournament because they were on probation. So basically, he didn't get a chance to play in March Madness. Barry was drafted by San Francisco with the second pick in the 1965 NBA draft. Now, this was before San Francisco turned into the Golden State Warriors and moved their team to Oakland to play basketball. He had hoped to be selected by the New York Knicks, but the Knicks decided to go for Bill Bradley instead of Rick Barry. Barry would not let this slight get to him. Basically, he went off for 57 points in a second visit to Madison Square Garden as a pro. And all that. Rick Barry would play for the Warriors, and the Warriors would make a massive jump, and almost got to the All Star game. I also got almost got to the playoffs, but missed by a few games. In his second season, he led the Warriors to the NBA Finals against the Philadelphia Seventy Sixers. Sir, ah, oh, crap, he's back. No Boston Celtics, are you not? How the hell did Boston not make the playoffs? They did make the playoffs in 1967, but they lost to the Philadelphia 76ers in the conference finals. And I mean, I don't doubt you, Mr. Doubter, because I mean, Boston winning eight straight titles. Uh, anyway, so the Warriors lost the final to the Philadelphia 76ers. Basically, Barry was huge. He led the NBA in scoring in its second season in 1967 with 35.6 points a game, which is pretty good, which is eighth highest output still. So Barry la averaged 40 points in the point eight points a game in the 1967 NBA Finals. Oh, I guess I forgot he played in the 67 NBA Finals. I thought he played in the NBA to start, but unfortunately, there was a lot of issues with management, and Rick Barry jumped from the NBA to the ABA and went to Oakland. It was shocking. 
why Oakland would do such a thing like that. But the court said that Rick Berry had to sit out the 67-68 season because of the reserve clause and all that. Unfortunately, Barry's, the publicity from this made Barry into a selfish and money-hungry person. But he was hardly alone. So basically, he, he had to sit out a year. But he got Oakland to the 1969 ABA championship. But Rick Barry tore ligaments in his left knee in a play in 1968. Despite Rick Barry being hurt, Oakland did win the championship over Indiana in five games. Oakland was a disappointment at the gate because of Barry's absence and all that. The fans couldn't do it. Pat Boone was the majority team owner, you know, the entertainer, but he went out of basketball business. So basically, he sold the team to Washington. Rick Barry didn't want to go to Washington, saying that the only time he wanted to go to Washington was being president. Washington did very well for themselves and all that. In Game 7 of the Western Division Semis, despite the fact they lost to Denver, he put up 52 points, the most points scored in a 7-minute deciding game in either the NBA or ABA. That's what I was talking about, the 50-point thing. Washington became, then became the Virginia Squires after the 1970 season. But Barry did not want to play in Virginia. He wanted to play in the NBA, ABA, but he didn't want to play in Virginia. Basically, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated in August of 1970 in a Squires jersey. But he indicated he would not return to the NBA if the league, even if the league paid him a million dollars. He would not he would not play one game for the Squires. And one of his stupid excuses was that he basically said that he didn't want his kids to grow up with a sovereign accent. I doubt they would have had a sovereign accent. Virginia decided to get rid of him to the New York Nets for 200,000 bucks. They did say that the negative comments was not the reason why he was traded. It was basically that the Squires owner was in financial troubles. So the Nets picked him up. Unfortunately, he had his knee injury was still there, but he still had good free throw shooting and all that. He went to the 1972 ABA Finals for the Nets, but lost to Indiana in six games. In June of 1972, there was an injunction by a U.S. District Court judge to prohibit Barry from playing from for any other team other than the Golden State Warriors after his contract with the Nets ended. So the Nets released Barry and he went back to the NBA. Barry was not much of an inside shooter anymore because of his knee problems, so he decided to be a perimeter shooter and ball distributor. And it made sense. He was team captain of the 1975 Golden State Warriors, who shocked everyone by getting to the NBA Finals. They took down Seattle and Chicago. And yes, I know Mr. Jordan probably might come back. But yeah, Chicago was in the Western Conference at that time. Anyway, they would face the Washington Bullets, who basically were going to be easily winning the title. Sadly, though, that didn't happen. As Washington, even though they had 60 wins, got swept. It was shocking. It was shocking that Golden State swept them. Never mind, beat them. So basically, Rick Barry... Had some issues and all that. Rick Barry would finish the 77 season, but then he decided to sign his free agent with the Houston Rockets. It was shocking that Rick Barry actually ended a career, his NBA career, with that. not in Golden State, <coughs> but somewhere else. So basically, Houston. It. He pioneered the point forward position as a ball distributor and three point threat. Until 
Larry Bird came by. Bear, Rick Barry, John Havlicek, and Billy Cunningham were the only players in NBA history to pass for more than 500, get more than 500 assists being a forward. All that. So his NBA, he only played 794 NBA games, but obviously there was a six year layoff because of the ABA. 23.2 points a game average and 6.5 rebounds a game. But his free throw percentage was great. All that. He would be a broadcasting icon. Unfortunately, though, he got in a whole lot of trouble. In Game 5 of the 1981 NBA Finals, he made a controversial comment when CBS displayed an old photo of colleague Bill Russell. Barry joked that it looks like some fool over there with that big watermelon grin. Unfortunately, you know, that's racist. Barry apologized for the comment. He didn't realize that a reference to watermelons would have overtones. Russell said that he believed Barry with regard to his racial attitudes, but nonetheless, they were not really friendly and all that. CBS would not um, renew Barry's employment. Well, obviously. So anyway, Rick Barry would try his best. His first wife was Pam. He had four sons and one daughter. Brent Barry won the 2005 NBA title with the Spurs. That was actually the second time in history that a father-son duo won the NBA championship, following Matt Gugas Sr. and Matt Gugas Jr. And then the Waltons, Bill and Luke, and the Thompsons, Michael, M Y C H K L and Clay. That's amazing and all that. John and Brett are now broadcasters and all that. So yeah, what an accomplishment for him to be an NBA star and an ABA star. The best of both worlds, I guess. So anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond Adu.